Hi there, it's Nicole here today with a Pivot pop-up card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. And this creates an amazing interactive element inside your card that twists and pops up and adds to the scene. It's so amazing. It is really, really cool. And once you see it in action, I hope it kind of makes sense for you and inspires you to create some of your own pivot pop-up card designs. There are so many different kinds of amazing scenes or greetings, all kinds of things you can create with this, and it's super duper fun. This is a fairly long video. I'm gonna apologize for that right now. Um, I really wanted to keep in the entire creation of the card, and it's basically two cards in one. Um, the entire front scene of the card plus the inside. I am going to be creating the base of my scene, which is what I'm doing here, from the stitched hillside backdrop. This was released kind of around the holiday, fall and holiday season, and both of the landscape and the portrait stitched hillside backups are my favorites. From that, I kept the inside portion, which is what I am stenciling with some mini clouds here using a My Favorite Things dye and Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink. This is going to be the background for my card. Now, not shown on camera, I actually really should have done the upper border of my frame as well. I did not like how the white frame looked. So off camera, I did just take my stencil and my ink blending tool and carefully lined up my stencil and inked up the border as well. This is gonna give an amazing seamless look to the design, especially where I am masking off the bottom stitched borders of this frame inking them up with Lucky Clover ink so that I have this nice green pasture down here below. I've also die cut the picket fence border. This is the little picket fence border. It's got that same great design that the Stitch Hillside backdrop has. So I die cut this from Smooth White cardstock and then I took my Stitch Hillside border and die cut that area again so that it perfectly and exactly lines up with the border on my card. And you'll see this when I go to put the layers together. For my frame, there are going to be three frame layers stacked one on top of another. This is just gonna give my frame a little bit more of a substantial look, plus allow any of those pieces that are gonna be in the background so that they are not popped up higher than the frame itself. I kinda hope that makes sense. Once I get it, get to putting it together, hopefully you'll see what I mean a little bit better. There's my fence. I really think in white it blends into the sky way too much, so I want to add some color to that, and I will be doing that here in a little bit. We're just gonna kinda quickly clean up the work surface. Super important when you're doing a lot of inking and you don't wanna get that ink on other components that you're working on, clean it up often. I usually just use my Distress sprayer bottle to spritz a little water and take a paper towel or a rag and clean that up. For the front of my card, we're only going to work on the front of the card first and next we'll move on to the inside of the card. I kind of think that flows a little bit better. This is how I personally work. So I went ahead and did the same thing in the video. I also stamped greetings from Hey There onto my background itself using the Misty so I could perfectly get those lined up and stamp them easily before I do any layering. The images from Hey There, the barn, I've got a speech bubble, uh, I customized it with a greeting, I've got chicks, I've got a pig and a cow. The ducklings are gonna be added here in just a minute. We'll get to those. I did all of the hay there images first. Oh, also an egg. I did the hay there images first and I colored them, I die cut them, laid them out in my scene, even started at assembling it because we're gonna get to the assembly portion and I just felt something was missing. Um, the additional images from Hey There, there is a darling goat that I really wanted to use and I just couldn't really get it to fit anywhere on my design. There's a sheep, there's a horse we're gonna use on the inside. Just scale-wise and size-wise, I didn't wanna 
overcrowd my barnyard scene. I still wanted, I wanted there to be a nice white space, which is basically the sky. The greeting goes in the sky. We're going to have some cute little stamped hearts, but I felt like I didn't want to overcrowd anything. So instead I kind of stuck to the smaller images and the ducklings from Rub-A-Dub-Dub are going to scale wise and critter wise kind of work and blend into my scene I think a little bit better than anything else. It just really is personal preference, whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna definitely be grabbing those other guys and using them for another card at another time. The colors I am using to color in everything are shown down the left side of the screen. Of course, some reds and grays for the barn, the yellow reds for the chicks, which are YR30, 31, and 24 with a little 27 for beaks and feet, R20 for cheeks. The pig is R00, 11, and 32. This is a really peachy pink. It's one of my favorite color combinations. Um, not only for a pig, but for flowers and other things. I think it's a really pretty color combination, but I think it works especially well for pigs. I think it's a little hard to get just the right color combination, and I really love this one. For the pig's feet, I contemplated where I wanted to go with that, whether I wanted to just do R32, which didn't really work. I used a little E43 and I felt like that was a little too brown. So I ended up doing a combination of R32 and just went over it with E43 to kind of tone it down so it's not so bright peachy pink. My cow is gonna be black and white. So the spots, the dark spots are warm gray five and seven. The Face of the cow is E000 and E00. And then the body of the cow is gonna be warm gray 00 and one. And these are just gonna be blended out so that the white of the cow is not quite so stark white and there's some nice shading and stuff going on there. The hooves are going to be warm gray seven. Little R20 for the cheeks here, blending that out with Warm Gray 00. It has lots of colorless blender in it, so it's gonna kinda help uh, spread that ink out really nice and mute it a little bit. The ducklings are Y11, 08, and 19. Coloring that all that area in, the bills and feet are YR04 and 09. And then I did a little dotted detail on my ducklings. If you watched my Rub-A-Dub-Dub -dub video, which I'll link to at the end of this one, I colored these exactly the same. I really like that. And the egg is actually from Hey There. I forgot it earlier. And so I went ahead and stamped that now, and that is E40 and E43. So it's a nice little br natural brown egg. We will die cut all of these little guys. And then I'm gonna just put some nice strong adhesive all over the front of a side fold card base. Layer one of the stitch till side borders. Go ahead and layer and then place the background in that so it's an inlay. We're gonna take one eight inch score tape around the top and sides and some adhesive around the bottom and adhere the next white layer and then finish with the inked layer that we did before. Now the fence is gonna go inside here. So before I add that last layer, I'm kind of looking at that, trying to decide. And I feel like the fence just completely disappears into the back background. I really felt that the white fence was the way I wanted to go. And I was a little bit worried about trying to color that. I didn't know if I wanted to try distress inks or coloring it. And I decided to just kind of do something maybe a little different and I'm going to color it in with Copic markers. I'm using E55 and E57 and I'm using the chisel tip just to lay that color down. I'm working on an easy clean craft mat. This is the tonic craft mat, which is what I like to use for all of my inking, um, alcohol inks, distress inks, anything like that, watercolor. I always use this, this is my favorite. And then I'm just gonna blend out and I'm gonna blend these two colors. These are the only two colors I'm using, E55 and E57. I did go back and add darker coloring in between all of the fence posts and I think that helps them stand out a little bit and then I'm simply going to glue this in place and that right there basically builds the background. 
What's left is adding all the cute components and adding just a few stamped hearts and coloring those in. So here is the background. The brown fence definitely stands out from the cloudy sky, which I really, really like. And I can just start adding all of these cute guys. What I love about these stitched hillside backdrops, they have fantastic stitching lines, obviously, along that bottom edge, which means you, with one layer, you can tuck things in. No additional cutting of grassy borders, no, um, it's all just one layer there. And I just think it's fantastic and it creates this amazing scene with minimal work. And where so many lawn fawn dyes, like the little picket fence, work with that, that they have the same shape. There's other dyes that also have the same shape. There's some little houses, um, all kinds of things. Even some grass, if you wanted to do something different there. Just, it makes me so happy that there are so many great dyes that work together. So I'm just going to build this up, add all of my little guys to this scene. I realized kind of about this time that I forgot my tree. With the pivot pop-up, there are a couple of trees that come with that. And I wanted to add a tree because I felt like the height of that, plus it's a great just addition to a scene, would work really well here, especially maybe next to the barn or something. And so I want to go ahead and grab that and get that on there too. Before I do that, I will stamp the little heart from Hey There. I like to do a trio, I like odd numbers. So I'm gonna do three of them kind of coming up from that area where the duck is walking along the fence. Color those in with my R27 marker. Just coloring directly over the background. They're gonna color over that Distress Oxide ink perfectly. It's not real dark, so there's no trouble there. And then I want to make sure I add detail to the eyes on all of my little critters. So that tree I'm talking about, we will come back to that. I'll get back to that here in just a little bit. I'm adding black detail to all the eyes. This is gonna make the eyes really pop. You also wanna make sure that you don't touch your card right away when you do this because you can smear that. It does take a couple minutes maybe to completely dry. I'm gonna fold my card in half, score that good with a bone folder. I didn't do that before I adhered my front panels. But then I can start working on the inside. And off screen, I have die cut two rectangles using the small, the largest of the smallest stitched rectangle dies and ink them up to mimic kind of what's going on on the front of the card. So the bottom part's gonna be inked with Lucky Clover. The top rectangle was stenciled and inked with Salty Ocean ink and a mini cloud border and definitely just mimics that because I want it to mimic what's gonna go on on the pivot pop-up. This is the pivot pop-up. All of the components here so I've got the pivot pop-up part, which I'm going to fold completely in half. I tried not to speed this part up too much so that you could definitely see, hopefully, exactly how this goes together. We're gonna fold it in half. I like to use my bone folder to make sure that I get a really nice, crisp crease. So we're just gonna go down the whole thing. Then we're gonna open it up and fold it on the score lines going both ways on a diagonal. Then you simply fold it in like this. Again, the bone folder is my best friend and it's going to pop out like that. So let's go ahead, these are the, I die cut two of these panels. This is the actual pop up part. And then you can use or not use if you don't want to. There is a, a little landscape die, which I'm going to use because just like I did the clouds and the grass or pasture, on the stitched rectangles and on the front of the card. I want this panel to mimic that totally. I'm gonna temporarily adhere my pop-up part together because I wanna ink this again with Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink and the mini cloud stencil. Because the border ends up being longer, but I want it to have that seamless cloud look. I'm just moving my stencil down as I'm inking. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you get all of your little critters or whatever you're using to build the scene in place, 
you don't notice any maybe small imperfections all that much. I'm just trying to line it up the best I can and add that ink all the way down this border. These two pieces fit together to form the pop-up part. This is what's gonna to attach to the pop-up interactive element. And this is the panel that you'll actually add any stamping onto, die cuts onto, whatever it is you're gonna do. For this card, this is the rest of the scene basically with a horse, more ducklings, more chicks, eggs, stamped and colored fence, and then of course some more trees. These are the additional borders you can choose to use if you want to. They really go well with this card design, so I did die cut these, and I'm inking them up with Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink to mimic the pasture, and they will go along the bottom edge of this panel. So again, we'll just ink those up, clean up all of this ink, and then start putting together the pop-up. I'm gonna spray a little water, clean this up with my paper towel, make sure everything is really good and dry. I'm gonna peel off my temporary post-it tape from these two pieces, fold them in half towards the inking, and then fold the rest of the, the little tab back. I'm gonna do this on both sides. Those tabs kind of fit or lock together, if you will, that's what's gonna hold those two pieces together. I'm also gonna fold the grass pieces towards the ink, and then I'm gonna take some nice, strong score tape. This is the 1 4th inch. It's a little bit wider than the 1 8th inch. Put this on both of the little tabs and go ahead and assemble this piece. You want those tabs to fit behind or lock behind each of these to make one long pop-up. So there is that. Go ahead and attach my grass while I'm working on this. I think adding as much as you can before you put the pivot pop-up in place really works good. You could even, if you need to do any stamping, I would, I would do it now. I probably could have gone ahead and put any of my critters down now as well, but I was really anxious to get to the pop-up and wanted to see how it was gonna look, so I went ahead and did that first. Let's grab the pop-up now. The adhesive goes on the triangle portion at the top on both sides. So I'm gonna put the score tape, I like to use something strong. Score tape works amazingly well. Whatever you like to use that's nice and strong and you're not gonna worry about it coming off. And then I'm only gonna remove one side of the score tape to start with. So let's go ahead and just remove that from one side. Take our card base and that little hole in the pop-up that is what you line up with the center of your card. You can see the seam or center of your card through that. Press that down in place, fold the pop-up back, remove the adhesive from the other triangle piece, and then take your card and fold that other flap or the back of the card, whichever way you're doing it, down, and that is gonna secure the pop-up to the card. Then on that pop-up, the die has a couple of little notches and I'm gonna grab the die so you can see that. The adhesive goes on these two little tabs here at the end. Again, I'm being pretty generous with the adhesive. With interactive elements like this, I really don't want it coming loose or falling apart. So I'm kind of maybe going overboard and adding plenty. But the panel is going to line up perfectly with that center piece. And actually that center seam of the pop-up is going to line up with the little um, indentions in that center piece. So let's get the adhesive off here, move that out of the way. And I'm gonna show you, I don't know if you can see it very good on the actual die cut, but here on the die, those little notches, there's little impressions, indentions and we wanna line up the top and bottom with that, then lay the pop-up out flat, and it's going to adhere to that adhesive we just put down, fold that shut, and here is the pop-up. It works much better, I think, the more you do it. It just starts 
kind of naturally opening and opening and closing and you don't have to worry about it catching like it does when you first get it. So just kind of do that several times, but how cute is that little pop-up? I think it's amazing. I did die cut the trees from the pivot pop-up. We are going to add the one here next to the barn. I inked it with a little gathered twigs and Lucky Clover Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to take some Copic markers and add a little dot detail to my tree. And I can't get over the pivot pop-up. It is so stinking cool. I'll just add some little dots, add some little texture to the trees with G17 and G02. And that finishes the front of the card completely. We are ready to finish the critters and things for the inside. The ducklings, the egg, the chicks were all colored exactly the same. The fence, I did not share that coloring of the fence either because it's E55 and E57, just like I used for the fence die cut on the front. But the horse, I went ahead and left that in since that was the only critter that wasn't colored exactly the same. The colors I'm using are shown down the left side of the screen. So, so cute. I love this little horse. I'm using the feathering technique for the mane and tail to give it a little bit more of a natural look, adding a little dot detail to the rest of the horse. And then we're gonna die cut all of these components and add them to the pop-up portion of the card. This is really where it's almost two cards in one and partly why this video is so stinking long today is because there's just so much going on. And I really wanted to make sure I left all that pop-up part in so that it would be hopefully easy to follow. Because I know when I got the die and looked at it, I really had to um, study it and then, of course, um, for Lawn Fawn, they sh shared how to use it and things. And so I, I looked at that. And as I played with it and got more comfortable with it, I thought it's just a really great little reference tool. If at some point, you know, I need to come back to it or whatever, and hopefully it will help you guys with creating an interactive card as well. So I have laid my card out flat. You can definitely see that sky kind of blends into the landscape. That's why I did those two panels on the inside instead of just leaving them white. I think it adds a lot to the design. It's not just that strip across the center that pops up. We're adding the fence, we're adding the horse, the ducklings, all of it exactly the same. The one little fence piece is going to kind of straddle the seam. I tried not to do that with too many pieces because A, they bend, and B, they're not going to lay very nice. This, the fence worked okay, but I wouldn't recommend putting too many things. Like I wouldn't put the horse to bend anywhere because I think it probably wouldn't lay very nice and it'll have funny seam and you don't really want that going through faces. So when you're adhering whatever it is to this inside piece, be conscious of that as you're adhering them. I decided to go ahead with the fence. I really wanted three pieces of fence and it worked out I think just fine. I'm also going to add two more of those trees that I added the one to the front of the card. We're going to add two of those here. And what's kind of awesome is even though the tree, the larger of the two trees, hangs off the side, you don't have to trim that off. It's not going to interfere with the A2 size of the card because once that pivot pop-up folds down inside, you're not going to have it, that little tree won't be sticking out, which I think is kind of cool too. So you really get this awesome extended scene. And Lawn Fawn has so many great stamp sets. You could create a scene for almost anything. Now I wanted to add some additional greetings inside the card. So I am using these from the Happy 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 add-on. Adding some more hearts coloring those in with R27. I even did the clouds and the sun from the Happy Village and added those up above with some more hearts. Here is the opening and closing of the pivot pop-up in real time so you can see how awesome that works and just how cute this interactive die is. Thanks for joining me today for this interactive 
pivot pop-up card featuring lawn fawn stamps and dies. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring lawn fawn that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.